Hey, Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Big, big show today. We've only got one undefeated team left. Joey Us got the L over the weekend. Geelong's the only one that's undefeated now. Adelaide got screwed again. Got screwed again. And Sam Draper was at the front of it. It was hilarious. And lastly, we talk about Glovegate. Oh, the big fella's wearing a glove. Oh, also was in hospital this week. We'll get into that. There's a lot to cover in this episode, so make sure you tune in. We're starting now. All right, Legends, let's get straight into this episode. we got a lot, but Braden, welcome to the pod. Uh, g'day, Mace. You'll have to excuse me. I'm on one of those two-day hangovers. I had oh. Bucks party on the weekend, went oh. to the footy, uh, and I got noticed again, which is hey. which is always good. I, I was sitting right behind. We went to the GWS Carlton game, and I was mm. sitting right behind the GWS bench, and I was thinking about it. I'm going to have a go at, oh, okay. at Mummy, oh. but no, <laughs> not as dumb as you. So, And then I was, I was chirping at some of the players. You know, you got to... Wheel out a couple of the favorites, like the, he's been doing it all day when the uh, game's only been going for 30 seconds type stuff. And <laughs> someone, squad stuff. someone a few rows back said, Oi, Mason Cox show, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, great. Hello. Welcome to my life. Yeah, <laughs> how good. Just walk the streets. People are like, shut up, you dipshit uh, American. <laughs> I like anonymity. Send me back. Uh, I don't want to be known. Oh, man, uh, it's a tough life. Someone's got to do it, man. But uh, let's get straight into it. Hey. Gloves on. It's going to be, hey, we're going to knock this episode out. It's going to be a great one. Uh, But first of all, let's get straight into the clangers of the week. What do you got for us? Yeah, I'm going to throw back to a bit of a retrospective clanger because this happened after we recorded last week. But Mm. uh, Charlie Cameron, now he got himself in a bit of strife against Melbourne, did like a bit of a dump tackle against Jake Lever, uh, and that MRO came out and said, look, mate, that's probably a week. And he said, yeah. Fair yeah, f- fair enough. Fair enough. I'll plead guilty. So, you know, wrap it all up. One week. Done. Dusted. We didn't, yeah. no confrontation, happy days, right? You would think. You would think. <laughs> but the tribunal, she just sitting out. They're like, nah, hang on. Nah, don't like nah. that. Don't like that at <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah, nah. <laughs> just came out of nowhere and said, you know what? He's a good bloke. Uh, let's just, let's go no weeks. <laughs> it's like, what? What are you talking about? He's pled guilty, mate. Yeah. Nah, nah, let's. Let's just undo that. Let's go with no week. So the tribunals come over the top, use their discretionary powers to take the week off him mm. uh, because he got the good bloke treatment. Now, we've seen it before. We got Saad. Um, Walid Ali came in, said yeah. Saad's a good Great bloke. Um, Eddie Betts helped out uh, in this instance. He came yep. in, said he's a, he's a ripping bloke, and they let him off. <laughs> they let him off. Eddie Betts <laughs> just goes, hey, I thought I'm actually going to tell you what to do. Eddie <laughs> so, Betts is running the show down it. there. How good. Uh, but yes, it. so he got it off. He got, like, it reversed. Didn't help. He didn't kick any goals and they <laughs> lost. But, um, yeah, I'm going to give it to the tribunal. Not to, yeah, okay. It's not his fault. He said guilty. But, yeah, so I'm giving it to the tribunal. I, I just find it a bit weird. I thought we'd, we'd figured it out. When they say, yeah, I'm guilty, you just leave it, wouldn't you? Oh, but, I mean, like, whenever you plead guilty, it's just really the only reason you're saying that is either you're saving yourself Reluctant. a game or you're saving yourself a fine Yeah. just by saying you're guilty. Do you believe you're actually guilty? Hell no. No. Yeah, it's actually no. Going, yeah, I actually believe that I'm guilty of that. They're going, all right, what's the least punishment I can get here. I was just scratching my head because I was like, I, it all just made sense until the tribunal came in and said, so now pretty much they came out and said, he's a good bloke, even though he'd been fined like six or seven times before for punching blokes behind yeah. play. <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> ignore that. Um, but yeah, came out, said he's a good bloke, and they said there's 668 players that have played over 200 games of the yep. current 13,000 players, and half of those people haven't been suspended before. So now, if you're one of those 330 <laughs> players above 200 games that haven't had a suspension, you get a freebie. Freebie. As long as it's free slot. As long as it's a one gamer, you don't want to be going out there and Barry Hall on someone. But like, <laughs> just pull it back in. You get one week oh, down nice to nothing. Guy. <laughs> or you probably got to rustle together a couple of blokes that say that you're an all, all right fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a couple of guys with a bit of you know really high respected people in the yeah. industry. Um, I've got my clanger being, I asked over the weekend, I had some friends from America coming in town uh, for the Live Golf Tournament that's around the corner. And I asked them, I said, you know, first game they'd been to. I said, what's the weirdest thing that you saw on the day, mm-hmm. right? And they go, I don't really get why the clock counts up. And I was at like, ground, right? at the ground, right? And I was like, yeah, okay. Because they had a TV in front of them. I said, the TV clock counts down. So you know exactly how much time's left on the TV. Yeah. But at the game, it counts up. But then they said, the weird thing is, and I agreed, 
every team, both people on the bench from each team have cards that say exactly how much time's left. Mm. From like five minutes to four minutes, three minutes to two minutes, to one minute to 30 seconds, that close to the time. They tell you what's left. So I think I've gotten to the point of just not really understanding the point of having the clock counting up. If we're already having people showing signs of how much time the clock is left on the clock on the sideline that everyone can see anyway. Got the spoilers. I don't <laughs> understand what the point of it is. Yeah, that's a very <laughs> Surely fair Surely we call. just go the same as the TV and just count down rather than counting up. It I doesn't reckon, make sense to me. I reckon this is a good idea. The concept is to bring in outsiders mm. or even just get Americans in. Sit in the crowd? What's weird? What are we doing? doing? Because I feel like we get so used to some of this stuff. And some stuff makes it unique about AFL, yeah. right? The bounce, the the trajectory of like a guy catapulting a ball over his head as an umpire for a throw in. That stuff's unique and cool, right? But there are some things that you look at and you go, oh, and this is totally different to any other sport. And it doesn't quite really make 100% sense. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is weird. It's I don't know. I think they're trying to <laughs> do the just things I've done. Yeah, I the just anticipation about. thing. They're trying to build a bit of hype. But everyone, the, but everyone, then you in see the, it. everyone in the crowd can see the cards on the sideline too. Yeah. So everyone is aware. Plus, everyone has their phone out anyway. I mean, like, let's just all agree that we know how much time's left. Let's just count it down. Check it. Would change anything? No. I don't no. think anything would change whatsoever. No. You have a clock next to the bench that says exactly how much time's left too. So. I don't. I don't know. I just. I just I thought of this it, the other day, and I was like, "That's actually a fair point." I don't, I don't think it would change it. my behavior as a viewer. There, like, to be fair, I was twelve I years in, be... and I couldn't see the clock if I wanted to. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> the Bucks party was going well. It was going well. Uh, I think it would add extra intensity to the game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Suspense, well, when you can I think see it, when you can see it counting nice. down. All right. Well, we'll get straight into the games. The first one off the bat, we got St. Kilda Western Bulldogs. Big. Big W for the Western Bulls. I, look, I thought the Bulldogs, from the media standpoint, were done. done. I thought, no way they're making the top eight from what the media is saying. You know, there's no chance. And all of a sudden now, they drop 124 points to St. Kilda 64 and double their score. And everyone's going, they're back, baby. You know what is disappointing is pressure builds on one club, but they've all responded. Like, I feel mm. like every club has responded. I like a bit of doom and gloom. <laughs> but, oh, geez, but some of these some of these clubs oh. are just responding and getting dubs, and it's it's all on North at the moment, but we'll North get to combat, North. But 64 sure, yeah. to 124, St. Kilda, massive disappointment. And another disappointing, like, Thursday night game. I feel like we've had a fair few. But the big question marks, because I reckon Bevo, under a little bit of heat, fair to say, I yeah. feel like he scripted this because it was there was pressure on him from every angle and all the players that were you know under the pump of under the, last the pump few weeks. giving yeah. him grief all came out obviously none bigger than Norton kicking six straight now yeah I've seen a lot of games he's, <laughs> six straight is massive for Norton he's, yeah. sometimes he's got the triangle foot on he's he just ones go that way ones <laughs> go that way six straight he couldn't miss and yeah. then obviously people were saying oh you got to throw him back throw him back something that I <laughs> saw from their social media team, which was a which was a, a bold move, was yep. to they posted a screenshot of his his player profile and crossed out um key forward and wrote defender in there oh, to kind geez. of have a crack at all their own supporters, which was very, <laughs> very unique. Because all the comments were still oh. like, we still want to see him back. Yeah, like Jamara's like... out, he's coming back. So I think their problem now is like Rory Lobb came in and played a really good game. Yeah. So they've got Lobb, Darcy, Norton, mm. Jamara. That's a tall, four, tall, tall forward line. So Jeez. unfortunately it, it must be Lob that goes out if they I feel like they're not going to pull the trigger on this Norton goes Back defender line, yeah it'd be tough to after kicking that many straight yeah it's a it throws me straight back to Darcy Moore yeah. being the forward and there being potential there and then the courage that it took to send him back, and then he's... And thank God he went back, because yeah. otherwise I'd be retired. <laughs> <So> I, <can't. laughs> I thought you were going to say because he's an elite defender. But. That too, that too. <laughs> but there was no room in that forward line if he was playing forward for my ass. Oh, <laughs> I will was, tell you that. And Cody Waitman started like a house on fire, kicked yeah. three in a row um, really quick. Uh, but yeah, Bailey Dale has like had a couple of games as sub. Mm. He had 39 and a goal. Jack McRae, 30 and a goal. Uh, so yeah, they were on fire. It's just like, I don't know what we're going to get next week. It's back on because <laughs> who knows? And we will go through the previews at the very end of this. So we'll go through who Western Bulldogs play this week and their chances, but we'll move into the next game. We got Adelaide versus Essendon. And this was as controversial as you will get Adelaide. 
Got screwed again. Got oh screwed again. It's it had to be them, didn't it? It, it was did. Uh, so bad. So I don't know. If you're living under a rock and you didn't see it, dying seconds, uh the ball is locked inside Adelaide's forward line. Mm. Uh and there's, you know, players diving for free kicks, hard balls. It was on for young and old. Anyway, yep. Sam Draper almost in slow motion <laughs> goes down to his knees and he had his hands up like you know, the police were aiming at him. <laughs> and then he slowly goes down, drops on the ball, uh, and then it's there, but he really didn't want to drag it in. And then he just scoops it in and Tex Walker locks it in and it's not paid holding the ball. Yeah. Which any other circumstance in the world, the easiest call. Oh, <laughs> I felt so bad at the time because you could see both teams were thinking, oh, no, uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> and um, yeah, didn't play it. Siren went after the fact. So the whistle mm. blew. So he definitely blew the whistle for the ball up before the siren yep. went. Siren went like seconds after. Um, AFL has since come out and said, whoopsie. <laughs> Uh, we did it again. We did it again, Adelaide. <laughs> uh, but next time, <laughs> okay. next time. Third time's a charm. <laughs> That's, oh, my God. I was saying, like, if they go down, uh, I think they're in Tassie this week. So oh, it's geez. like, if they go down and get screwed there, I just stay there or something. I don't know. Give up. Just I would boycott, wouldn't yeah. you? you got to do something to get their attention. It obviously throws back to that old video of the guy crying when Collingwood got the win over him saying, ah, we were screwed right in front of me, <laughs> right in front of me. Um, but, yeah, it just seems to happen to Adelaide. And there's, like, yeah. The, the, my favourite part's the very end of the game, the vision of Sam Draper reenacting <laughs> what he did. And if you have any question as to whether or not that was intentional, that video of him literally just dry humping the ball <laughs> there was, I think, 100% proof that he meant to just dive on it. So bad. There's no there's <laughs> no, there's no, no situation that you could just sit there and go, oh, he was reenacting it. And the way he laughed after it and everything else, like the way he reenacted was like, oh, yeah, like I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I just... Uh, like, like, yeah, there was, you know, multiple teammates and stuff after uh, the game going like, He got away with murder, yeah. and he knew it. <laughs> he I was knew it. <laughs> holding my breath because he was done. Geordie, after your game, came out and said, I can say it. He was done cold holding the ball. <laughs> um, so, yeah, very interesting one. It does take me back just now thinking of it. The O.J. Simpson case. <laughs> 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 you must have quit. We're the ones wearing quit. gloves. <laughs> Tell me. Um, yeah, it reminded me of Toby Green. Remember when he brushed up against oh, – I say brushed up against. He yeah, got done for bumping against. into the umpire. But after, in the rooms, he was talking to, I think, Mummy, going mm -hmm. like – reenacting like how he bumped him. And then you're like, just do it away from the ground. <laughs> See all the cameras? <laughs> they can film you. And whatever you say is going to be used against you <laughs> yep. in a court of law. Yes. Uh, but Do that yeah. at home. <laughs> yeah, so leave it for at home. But, I mean, he, he got acquitted, didn't he? He did. He did. And the <laughs> AFL is the ones that don't look so intelligent at the moment. But <laughs> that's all right. These things happen. Adelaide, yeah, better luck next time. Next time. <laughs> better These luck next time. Happen. They These only things happen, happen to Adelaide. We'll move to the next game, Carlton GWS. This is one of the big games of the round, obviously. Carlton has been informed GWS. Uh, was undefeated, mm. and they lost this one. Carlton got over him, 117 to 98. And look, Carlton is the real freaking deal. It's a bit fuzzy, I'm not going to lie, but I'll give you what I remember from the game. But mm. no Sam Taylor, which is apparently what... Can I get the drunk version of what happened from Braden? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't remember any of these stats. Uh, I do remember other entertainment that showed up at the Bucks party at the I game? I do remember <laughs> Riccardi, because I was yelling out at Riccardi on the bench. He hadn't come on the ground yet, and I was like, you got to lift, Riccardi. <laughs> so they must Were have really... Were you close enough for like, players to hear close. you? Oh, and I could you're see one them. of those... Frick fans, Not I like stand. trying to listen. <laughs> uh, uh, I kept yelling, Pete Ling, it's time to warm up. Like every time someone did something. And then, yeah, so he was the sub. But he came on, kicked the goal. We had a, a drinking game, and I oh, drew uh, – it was – you draw a name out of the hat, yeah. and whoever you get, drink responsibly. Uh, <laughs> drink responsibly. Whenever they kick a goal, you have to spin a wheel. Spin the wheel, and you either had to take a drink, buy a drink, or eat a chili hot chip. Eat a chili like one of chip. those, like Carolina, oh, Carolina, Reaper. Carolina Reaper. That just ruins your whole night. Why would you yeah. ever choose so that? So I actually stomached it pretty well. I drew out Josh <laughs> Kelly, and I was like, "Beauty, Josh Kelly, he might kick one." Yeah, kicks 
three from the midfield. <laughs> Calm down, bro. That was that's what I remember. So what did you land on? The beers? No, I the, had the, the chip. Chip? You yeah. had three chips. No, so I had one chip and then I Just sank it down and with then the beer. two drinks. I had to scale <laughs> my beers, drink. Yeah. I don't think I had to scale my drink, but I scaled my drink. I had a few trays. So uh, <laughs> safe to say you weren't going for Carlton that day. No, well, yeah, it was <laughs> we had Crips 39, 13 clearance, Walsh 35, three goal assists, six clearances. Yeah. The midfield really getting it done, but the goal kickers, they mm. were everywhere. They're Harry th- Harry three, De Koning three, Charlie three, Riccardi three, Kelly three, Hogan three. Mm. Cheapers who didn't kick three. It'd be uh, a bad day to be at a Bucks party for beers. <laughs> <laughs> Just play that well, game. Well, the Buck he did have Harry and Charlie. Oh god! So he actually probably got off light with six. Uh, uh, but yeah, a few incidents out of this game. Toby yeah. Green. We saw a very similar instance uh, with two meter Peter earlier yeah, in the year. Him, yeah. uh, different result. So he mm. like coming out, eyes for the ball, looking for the mark. Last second, sees bloke, turns shoulder, yeah. makes connection. Uh, at the time, real time, I thought, that's fine. That's mm. a, just a marking contest. Replay looks bad. Bad. <laughs> bad. Not great. But, um, yeah, so I don't know. I This is a bad take, but it's what I feel. Love this. Is, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, there's got to be some kind of responsibility on this, the reckless action of going back with the flight, not knowing your surroundings and throwing yourself in there. It's like, mate, look after yourself because – it's like, obviously, Toby's coming up at the ball, sees the ball, he's got vision of everything, mm. and they're saying it's on him to protect the other player, which I get. And I'm very much like, you got to protect the head and no concussions and stuff. But like, I feel ba- like the bloke's coming back, doesn't know where he is, where people are around him. He's got eyes on the ball going back with it. Yeah. And then at some stage, Toby's like, I could get concussed here if I don't protect myself. And then it ends in a terrible result. But it's like, I don't think we should be pumping up these like back with the flight things. Um, and we will talk about one of your teammates mm. later in the episode who's very courageous, goes back with the flight all the time. But it just, yeah. it's not... I don't feel like it's worth it, but I, I've never played a game of AFL. <laughs> You're also not contracted by these things. You're not like hey, every contest is a also, contest that could drop you for the next week and end your career. I also don't have CTE. Yeah. So it's, it's very, very true, Brendan. It's, but it's it's so I it's, don't know. It's a it's an interesting time in AFL kind of history where I think the back with the flood is the courageousness of it is being challenged by yeah. the CTE aspect of what it can cause. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think like the, the courageous, it used to be like, oh, who's so courageous going back with a flight? Well, now people are like, oh, geez, that's a bit. I feel like I it should be now that, seen as silly and reckless. Like, But I think it's you know, I think it's on the person that can see everything in front of them. Because if you, if you go back with the flight, you don't know who's coming at you or anything like that. You're just trying to go back and catch it. Like, yeah, but why does the guy that has the vision have to like look after the reckless like <laughs> lunatic going back with the, with the flight? It's, I don't you know. You just can't make head, high contact. Yeah, it's just a weird space Mm. because it's yeah i feel like that person has a duty of care to themselves as well it can't just rest all upon the opposition players yeah but it's impossible to know what's behind your head yeah so it's a it's a it's not a great scenario for anyone never have to go back with a flight no and it's uh it's cost a few people a few weeks now with um the i guess the aggressor of the person going for the the mark but i thought this one was a little bit different from the snm one where Mm. He was a bit, uh, and it's it, this is like milliseconds difference, right? Like mm. I think Toby had a little bit less time to make the decision than um, than two meter Peter. So obviously the suspensions are different from the AFL standpoint, but we're all trying to figure out exactly, you know, we don't even know really the full extent of the concussions and what they can do and everything else. We're all in a learning phase, and I think with that we have to try to learn, um, you know, what is adjudicated is okay and what's not okay as far as I guess contact whenever you go back to the flight. I remember there's always a million of them of stories going like it's you you got to go you got to go mm. you call the player into it. Uh, I remember one I think it was Heath Shaw on Alan Tuvey and Alan Tuvey caught a knee to the whole face. Oh, and it was just like, are you last one on this? Are you encouraging players to like go in that instance? Are you like it's yours? You got to go, or is that dying out? No, nah, usually if you see a teammate of yours going back with a flight, you block out your man. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. usually you kind of you know look you after him to, to make it. sure you protect him. Yeah, that's that's what defenders will usually do. You'll see it quite often. Um, 
But we'll, we'll move on from that uh, that topic to the next game. We've got Brisbane versus Geelong. This, man, you needed Noah's Ark to get one from, from one side to the other. It was pouring uh, down right over there at the Gabba. And that is why Geelong only scored 63 points and got the W against Brisbane, who only scored 37 on the day. Pretty wild to look at that game. Brisbane, Geelong, a lot of good key forwards in this game. Mm. And you got Hawkins, zero goals. Jeremy yep. Cameron, zero goals. Charlie Cameron, zero goals. Joe Danaher, zero goals. Like, who's kicking Jeez, these if you're, goals? A, if you're a Bucks party there, you'd be having a pretty lame-ass time. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm glad I drew Jeremy Cameron out. out of the joint. Uh, but, yeah, uh, absolutely teaming down. And, you know, Geelong, get it done, undefeated still. Big kind of injuries out of this one, as, yeah. as you would kind of expect in these conditions. There's arms and legs and heads and yeah. stuff flying all over a lot the place. Of uh, Tom Stewart concussed. He got his face mushed up against the back of someone else's, mm. and he's – out with concussion. Oscar McInerney, head Big clash, yeah. um, which kind of hit him under the eye, like the cheekbone, uh, which saw him get subbed out early, like halfway through the second or so, mm. uh, which saw Josh Dunkley step up in his hey, shoes. Hey, the big dog. The big D. Do we call him the big D after the big O? He's got the mm, big, big, big D comes in, <laughs> uh, just swinging. Uh, oh, in 21 ruck contest. <laughs> I don't get what you're talking about. Uh, Josh Dunkley, 21 ruck contest, two hitouts. Pretty. Well, that's a pretty terrible percentage, right? But hey, for a midfielder who doesn't play much ruck, that's pretty good. He's pushing plumber status. Oh, uh, just 48 to 48 go. 48 more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but now we got the reverse uh, gabatoire. We got the yes. reverse curse. They used to not be able to win. At the MCG mm. or the likes. They, they but win everything at the Gabba, and now they're yet to win a game there. Yeah, 0-3 at the Gabba. 0-3, I'm pretty sure. And mm. then they beat Melbourne at the G, which yeah. is crazy. And then they won a game over in Adelaide for Gather Round. Norwood Oval. Norwood, mm. which is the, the Norwood fortress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a topic at the moment of Brisbane not being able to win at home after I think they had won like, it was almost like 15 or 20 games straight, I feel like, at the Gabba. Um, last year, so it's it's this interesting time for Brisbane. Maybe they start oh. training at the Gabba or something, just to kind of get used to it. You'd I'm not be really so too sure. Confused, wouldn't you? It's very odd because, um, yeah, I just you kind of last year it was like you know Carlton went up there in the prelim and it was like oh my gosh, like if there's a team to do it, maybe it's them. Yeah, um, and it was a close game. Carlton went up really close. quick early on them, and then uh, you know uh, Brisbane came back and ended up winning that game, but. It's a weird dynamic now that they can't win there, and maybe it's a bit of juju that's in their head now that they can't win at the Gabba, and they need to just – a lot of times you just need to get that first one. You need the yeah. first one, and then you just – everyone stops, stops talking about it. It's yeah. not a thing anymore, and you just move on. Well, that's what they were saying about the MCG. Yeah. But now, obviously, the Gabba tour. We talk about one team that can't win. Mm. We talk about another team that can't lose. West Coast Eagles Oy, on fire. Yay. Back. Her so back. Was it. Uh, and they got Freo, the uh, hometown rival, crosstown rival, crosstown the, rival. The Derby, is it? The Derby. The Derby. If derby. you say Derby, like I'll Palmy say Derby. <laughs> and one of us is right. Derby. Well, Harrow <laughs> always runs with the Palmo. Uh, yeah. uh, we got, Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, West Coast, two in a row, Waterman. Yeah. Second bag in a row. Nailing it. He did the. The sprinkler, <laughs> the water man. Uh, we got Harley Reid. He's going to go all right, this kid. <laughs> Good Lord. He is, uh, for an 18, 19 year old kid, he is killing it. It's it's really not fair. Um, and then if you're a North fan, mm. you just just hate life right now. <laughs> just not happy. <laughs> but yeah, he was, he was not only like breaking tackles, bursting out of the center. I feel like at times he was very close to kicking it up in the air, mm. running down and taking the mark Yeah, because he was doing everything. He was Cripps taking- did that over the weekend, actually. <laughs> Cripps did kick it to himself and marked his own freaking kick. Uh, but uh, he he's taking hangers too. So I don't think you, get, you don't get to be tough, strong, and athletic. It's not fair, but he's kicked three goals. Mm, took a hanger. Took took a couple hangers. It's ah, uh, it's just. Who did North draft? I don't know. Someone pretty good. Someone. I someone can, we, decent. I can't even remember, but I feel like it's not up to Harley Reid. It's just the problem the moment, is, is whoever it? it is is never going to be. That's, it's a tough Harley position Reed. to be in. Yeah. Uh, he's already getting compared to Slick Nick Dacos. Uh, uh, yeah, calm down. T- two different guys. Very different players. Two different guys. Yeah. But you would love to have Harley Reid. The problem is mm. North could have had Harley Reid, and if they were just nice and not let Horny Frank just. 
not have the ice bath, it yep. would still be there. And they got, mm. imagine Horn Francis and Harley Reid running around in the one midfield for North, except they're just sitting down on the bottom and they got <sighs> spanked by the Hawks, which we will get to, unfortunately. We've got to cover that game. But Sean Darcy, back. The boy's back. He's the back. big doll. And winning ruck taps uh, mm. and Luke Jackson goes forward, kicks to Hard to tell if it's overall positive or negative because they yeah. lost a game they needed to win. Expected to win. Expected to win. In one of the biggest games of the year, obviously being their crosstown rivals. Well, really, like, they fumbled the bag because they'd had two close losses, obviously got the screw job against Carlton. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so they're a good team. Freo's a good team. And then they lost the West Coast. So don't mm-hmm. know now. Don't know. So... Fraud watch on the Freo, uh, but, but that, it's not going to help them that uh, Jai Amos yeah. hit, hit his head on the, a lot of concussions. We don't like this. Them, yeah. We need to rein that back in. Less concussions, thanks. Uh, but yeah, hit his head. He's, he was out with a concussion or a headache. He had a headache. Mm. Uh, don't like headaches. And yeah. you saw this Sorongo. Sorongo was unreal. Tell me about Just this. Full on, you know, bobbed the ball like he was on the boundary, bobbed a few times, bobbed a few times, and then the ball's going out of bounds, he saves it, and then miraculously, the ball's like on the line, he just somehow jumps to his feet as if he's about to get onto a wave on a surfboard, jumps up and just slots one from the corner and just at the tightest angle, and I'm just sitting there looking at this guy going, one, you're a freak, like two, unselfishly put that at the top of the goal square for the big fella, (laughs) and three, it was just an incredible goal, and I was like... Out of all the goals I've seen this year, that's almost one of those I go, the difficulty of it, very, very high. The execution of it, very high. I'm going, I don't know if I've seen a better goal yet this year. Goal of the year? I don't know if it'd be goal of the year. We still have a lot of season to play out, but it's it's definitely up there as a top contender is how hard that was actually to do. He's a little, for me, I don't know, I could be way off, but I, he just looks like a little baby-faced assassin. Is he, <laughs> t- is he tall? Because he doesn't look tall. And then he just uh, looks young and like, a boy, but he just rips it up. He just rips apart it's people. It's crazy. It, yeah, it boggles the mind, but he's one hell of a player. He is a very good player. We'll move into the next game, Sydney versus Gold Coast. The BG200, Brody Grundy, hits 200 games. Uh, absolutely stoked for the fella. Incredible accomplishment for him. And um, started across three clubs now and uh, had, a, had an amazing game over the weekend. Played really, really well. Got his first goal in the Sydney Colors on yeah. his 200th game, which is pretty cool. He was so happy. He was, he was so, so up and about. It was oh, the, cool. the, the, after the goal, the, the jump, you know, yeah. like the celebrated fist pumps, you know. Like, yeah. That's <laughs> like, oh, shit, I kicked the goal. Like, it's a surprise. <laughs> it was like from 45. Yeah. So it wasn't easy, but I think he was pretty stoked once he saw that thing going through the big ones. Hey, anyone that says that he's not a Ford, eat those apples. <laughs> uh, but it was awesome. There was one moment from the game where, obviously, ex-teammate uh, Jared Witz yep. plays for the Gold Coast Suns. Captain, yep. Uh, and he was lining up to take a shot at goal. And Brody, who's, <laughs> it doesn't look like a big talker, he had this beaming smile on his face and he was just chirping at Witter, yep. who came in and just shanked it. So whatever <laughs> he was saying was working. <laughs> But I, yeah. I don't think Witsy's probably known for his goal kicking abilities. I wouldn't say he's probably after training doing a lot of that, but um, it is quite funny. Like we all played against each other, you know, early years of our career and earlier years, and um, you, you do get to know people. And like you know, he's he's a beautiful human, Witsy, and, and Brody is too. And they uh, they competed against each other for a long time, and now they're both kind of moved on to greener pastures. And I'm sure they would have had a bit of a laugh, you know, running around against each other about where they're at now and. Uh, it was hilarious to see him just talking a bit of smack on the on the field. Because I mean, like I do it to Brody, like yeah. the same same, right? Like you, your mates, and it's a it's a unique opportunity to to have a bit of a jab and not get in trouble for it. <laughs> the the ruck factory out of Collingwood, jeez, you uh, produce some rucks, don't you? How the fuck did I outlast <laughs> these guys? <laughs> there was one thing that I noticed, and this is like kick them while they're down type stuff, but. Mm. Dead silence after Gold Coast <laughs> kicked the goal. Mustn't have been many traveling fans, but it was dead silent. It mm. reminded me of like a soccer game when the away team scores a goal and yeah. no one's there out of fear of safety. Uh, but come on, Gold Coast I fans. Know. Get down there. See your boys. They're having a pretty good season this uh, so far this year. Oh, this is a blip on the radar for my boys, the Suns. But uh, <laughs> these things happen, you know. The boys get up for the, uh, the milestone games. We got smacked over the weekend. Yeah. Well, let's jump into North Melbourne versus Hawthorne. This was the game that we were looking at from the start, wasn't it? Picked it Hawthorne last week. versus North Melbourne. We were going, hey, 
must watch TV. And I was, you know what was bad? Like hangovers are bad, but when you're hungover on the couch and you're forced to watch North v. Hawthorne, jeepers, I was in bad areas. But look, Mitchell. Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon. <laughs> got it done over Clarkson in the Mitchell Clarkson Cup. Mm. There's got to be some somewhere I can hear holes being punched in walls because that performance was just. Nothing. Well, it was just Jeez, nothing. Brain. Come on. Well, what are they doing? They're, I looked back. It got me curious because I looked back at North, and I know it looks like we're punching down here. But <laughs> you are. <laughs> you definitely are. Like how I said we, I just throw you yeah, under you the bus. Yeah, you just throw me under the bus too. Uh, but I went back and looked at the, like the last 11, 12 years. Mm. They've, whoa, they had a couple where they just scraped into the eight. Mm. Their highest was six. Uh, and then nothing, but like they, nothing like they would finish 10th and 12th and like there's a little spattering around yep. there. And then from 2020, shh, <laughs> oh, dead last, Yeah, no, like two wins, one win, three wins, nothing. And it, and then surely North fans, mm. none of which I'm sure still watch this show <laughs> 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 after the crap that we've talked about North. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, surely they're looking at Hawthorne going like, Hawthorne got rid of their entire leadership group yes. like a couple years ago and they're convincingly beating North. And then you look at West Coast, just won two on the road after people were calling them a waffle side a couple yeah. of weeks ago. It's like, North's got to go. <laughs> like, what? What? when do we get a crack? Where's the expectation? Where do from? we get something? We got Clarko. We thought, oh, only upwards yeah. from here. And... Geez, even that hasn't been a smooth ride, but <laughs> but, but now still nothing. Yeah. Give them something. I don't know. They like with hope. looking at uh, Ben Mackay, had eight wins in nine years or whatever it was playing yeah. at North, and he's over at Essendon. He's probably going to get there this year. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give us something. Give us something. Come uh, on. It is rough times for North Melbourne, but hey, there's always light at the end of the tunnel, Braden. <laughs> Somewhere. Where's, I don't, I don't, I don't think, know the time frame of how that light travels and how fast, but there is going to be light at the end of some tunnel at some point. And you know what's going to happen? The AFL is probably going to bail them out. If I know anything as far as history goes with the AFL, if this continues in this direction, the AFL will find a way to give them an advantage. Sometimes you think you're in a tunnel, but you're actually just in a hole. <laughs> Jesus. That's, that's a pretty good analogy. So uh, we'll move on from there because that's a full stop on that. Yeah. Uh, Collingwood versus Port Adelaide. Here we go. Here we we're go. Talking about something. We were sick when we came off the Jeez, the a... Hawthorne win. Yeah. So we didn't re- we didn't even talk about that. So no joy there. No. Uh, but this was like a win win. That one was mm. like you just got there. This one, yeah, you flogged them. You flogged them. Did look a bit sketchy at the start. Yeah, for three quarters, we flogged them. <laughs> that first quarter, though, a bit, uh, a bit questionable. See, I this was, was, the... was a bit nervous. Fans were kind of on edge going, oh, geez. This was the start of my night, and I was like glancing over at the screen, having the first couple, and I was like, what's going on? What is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> what is- <laughs> Where- Where's Collingwood? And yeah. But then all of a sudden just turned it on. Went like, mm. all right, that's the head start. Now let's go. And you just piled on the pain. What happened? Uh, I think our midfield start clicking a bit more and we're getting into the forward line more. I think in that first that first quarter, we just didn't see the ball on our forward line as much. We're a bit fumbly here and there. And then uh, we just kind of cleaned up a bit of the skills that we had um, issues with in that first quarter. And we're just to get it like into our forward line where if we got it to ground, uh, Port Adelaide, I think, was like 18th or 17th as far as you know ground balls in their you know, defensive 50. So. Mm-hmm. If we get in there and then be able to get it to ground, all of our guys, you know, your Bobbies, your Bows, your Shooters, your, you know, your Patty Lipinski's, all these people could kind of get to work and you saw them kind of shine over the weekend because um, they had such an aerial threat with Allier and Radicalier. Uh, mm. Radic- Radicalier? <laughs> Radicalier. Your man, all um, Radicalier, all them. It was one of those things, if we could shut off their ability to impact in the air, then I think we could take care of it on the ground. You saw that over the weekend. So uh, those last three quarters, that's kind of what really shined and, you know, everyone was sharing the ball around and giving goals off left, right, and center. So it was it was a very wholesome win for the team, I'd like to say. I did see that nice clip from Jamie just saying when mm. the team is selfless, the run, chase, give off handballs, open goals, it flows through the whole squad. It, it feels like that has been the change. Have you felt that change? Has, has that been a focus to be like, let's go back to team or focus on team? Or uh, You always focus on the team. I think like, yeah, we, we make a point of it to try to be like really connected. Um, but I think it's those, those moments where, you know, you got your John Noble, 
you know, comes across whenever he's out, oh. like there's so, someone, something's happened. He's had to like run half a field away to go and like spoil the ball out of bounds. And, you know, Craig's rubbing his head as he goes back on the field. Like there's those moments of like Bo's chase on tackle, you know, like the three or four goals we had out of the goal square, like kicking a goal out of the goal square with no one around him, like I think as an opposition is one of the most demoralizing mm-hmm. things. So, and it's also very energizing for the opposition or for the team that's kicking him. So, I think it's those little things that accumulate together to create that kind of connection and like, you know, feel like a momentum that's going forward. And we felt that over the weekend. There's so many instances where, you know, it was this one play that, you know, was able to get us, you know, 100 meters gained and then be able to get a goal at the back of it that, you know, gave us that energy. And you just saw us continue that throughout those three quarters. And then the crowd was back, which just, mm. oh, it's so electric. It's when like 65,000 to the G, I think. Which, which is pretty good for a Saturday again. So crazy with the interstate team, Port Adelaide coming in. It mm. was like the biggest crowd or ever between the two clubs. So yeah, okay. that was a pretty cool uh, accomplishment. We will talk about the glove. Now, I said earlier in the week, we need to give us something. <laughs> we need some <laughs> clips. We need some, we need some energy coming through the podcast. Yeah. You said you've got a little story. Yeah. Tell us about you. You had a trip to hospital. Well, yeah, this this is actually nothing to do with the glove, but um, <laughs> <And> <laughs> I had that, a big week, Braden. It was an was, interesting week. You thought it was a bye week. It was a very fun-filled week. Um, yeah. I went to hospital. Um, I had a, uh, not necessarily any kind of like health scare, but I needed to get a bit of a health check on something that was um, going on with my body. and got put under for uh, a bit of a operation, you could say. Um, yeah. It's kind of disgusting, but to people out there who have had these things, they'll understand how ruthless it is and how much it's not fun. But uh, colonoscopy and endo- endoscopy or something like that. So right. down, the throat, have- down the throat, up the back end, uh, yeah. you get put out for it and you wake up. So that was um, – In which order? Like, uh, hopefully the, the <laughs> down the throat first. <laughs> you sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I spent no- – uh, sorry. So I you know, had a half day in hospital and was knocked out for the procedure and all that kind of stuff. So – I wasn't really 100% sure if I was going to play over the weekend and then felt pretty good training and stuff. And then, um, yeah, I decided to kind of make a decision to play over the weekend and had uh, had some issues with, like, my hand um, that was just kind of annoying me, like a little grumbly stuff that was nothing, like, too substantial. But uh, I've got this little kind of hard kind of cast thing made for my hand. Mm. And I guess, like, the AFL, like, talking to the physios, like, the AFL will make you kind of tape over the whole thing. And the tape would just kind of go through your whole – palm of your hand so it wasn't like you had any kind of grip whatsoever so um, I asked if I could essentially wear a glove and I had to get it approved and we tried to approve it for the Hawthorne game but AFL was in Adelaide and they just said they had better things to do so no reception <laughs> out at no Norwood reception at Norwood <laughs> so it took about two weeks to get it approved and then we finally got it approved and you know was able to play with it this weekend so it uh, just kind of keeps the the kind of just it's like a little hard cast thing that I wear on my hand that um, somewhat protects it and uh yeah, just kind of got to keep that on. So the glove became another accessory to wear on the weekend. <laughs> it's not- might, next next week, I might roll out with like a gold chain, a headband, yeah. a hat. You know, I'm trying to think what else I can get approved by the AFL. I feel They're like- They're pretty strict because they make you even, this is ridiculous and probably TMI, but they make you actually, any branding on it, yeah. they make you black it out. Like even my glasses, like this side of my glasses, they make me Sharpie in and it just has like an F and an A in it. It's a, the model type of the glasses. The AFL doesn't want any branding, so they make you sharpie it out. Which is stupid, right? Oh, it's, it's <laughs> not even a brand. Oh, We've like talked about this before, but I've never really just like – so even if the club has a protected sponsor, say it's Nike, mm-hmm. you're allowed to wear whatever boot you want because it's a tool of the trade and yep. you've got to look after your feet. So how is the goggles and the glove not a tool of the trade because you're looking after your eyes and your hand? I don't get it. I don't think we should overthink it because it sounds stupid. But- I didn't say it. I didn't say it, Brad. I thought it very loudly. But I didn't say it. I didn't say anything. Anyway, that's oh, yeah. So man. yeah. Funny so times. talk us through the glove because obviously instant flashback to Travis Cloak. T Cloak, who's been on the pod. Check out the episode. Very good. Glove gate for those Glovegate, that don't know. Whoa, whoa. Uh, he wore a NFL style <laughs> sticky, yeah. sticky glove <laughs> against GWS, and I think he took the most contested marks out of anyone in history. <laughs> <laughs> and he kicked, I think it was five goals or something, uh, and that had some consequences of yeah. GWS uh, missing top four. <laughs> uh, whoops. Um, but yeah, so everyone was obviously 
wondering what <laughs> how's What's the glove on? how's the glove how um, grippy is it what's it like to play in did it feel good are we going to see the gloves stick around for a while so to give you an idea there's only probably like 6 or 7 approved gloves the IFL allows right and they're like very specific brand very specific types unfortunately these gloves only come in so many sizes None of which fit me. So I just had to go to the AFL and send them a thing and say, like send them a glove and say, look, this is what I want to play in. This is the only thing that actually fits me because of the, the sizing difference. So, um, yeah, they approved it and everything else. Um, will it be a thing for the rest of the year? I hope not because I think my hand will be better in like a week or two's time. But this just kind of allows me to, to somewhat protect it for a little bit. Um I do kind of find it funny. It's not as I mean, you're wearing it now. You're wearing the same one. It's not an NFL glove by any means. It's no. not nearly as sticky as an NFL no. glove. There's not really stick to it. It is a golf glove. Did cop a bit of criticism of Michael Jackson. Um, you know, you go and play 18 rounds after this or 18 holes after this. What's what's your uh, what's your post game looking like? Um, <laughs> what's your handicap? <laughs> what's your handicap? Yeah, yeah a few of those. Uh, but no, I think it's it was a decision just to kind of do and. I trained in it for a captain's run, and that was it. Mm. I didn't really do any much goal kicking with it or anything like that. Yeah. You, over the weekend, I kicked two goals, and I was probably the least confident I've ever been <laughs> trying to ball drop with this thing. It just feels totally it's different, right? Right hand. It's on my right hand, the glove. So these yeah, are the opposites. So these are the opposites. opposites. These are my actual golf gloves. Yeah. Um, and it feels very different whenever you ball drop. So there was, I think, like the second goal I kicked, if you looked at it, if you had a direct line behind me of like going towards the goals, I think it would have gone out of bounds on the full and then all of a sudden just hook turned to the right and then went through. And I'm sitting there looking at it going, holy shit, a hurricane just came through the MCG, turned that thing into the goal and uh, just started laughing with everyone else about it. But it is a different feel. It is unique. Um, I know it's caught a bit of Travis Cloak about it, as everyone says, but um, now it's it'll stick around for a little bit. I think you got to wear it until you have a bad game wearing it. You had a don't jinx it. Not going for <laughs> you, it. you had an amazing game. It's um, so you, you've kicked two goals. Hmm. You probably should have had a bit more goal assists, but <laughs> they, oh, it God. just went through a couple more hands when hmm. it, the big fella did all the hard work. Uh, how did you rate your own game? Yeah, it was good. No, it was good. I think everyone, like, whenever you score 123 points and you're playing the forward line, everyone's pretty happy, right? Yeah. Well, um, over 100 and you won. So you wouldn't it's, believe it's, that. So, it's still going. Yeah, it's a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty uh, unique thing. It might be onto on something podcast. here. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Keeps happening. Um, no, it was it was good. And I think it was it was enjoyable to kind of see us get a bit of our flow and energy and stuff yeah. back at the MCG and uh, in front of a big crowd. And um, you talk about, we've gone here, Bobby, with, you know, what he was doing, giving away goals left, right, and center. And, it's like he didn't want um, it. Oh, it was just like we we kind of got to the point. We got past one person, and we we kind of had another person out, and then another person out, and yeah. another person out. Where, um, you know, we just were, I think, being able to even and like you know actually get an, an extra that was open to be able to get a better shot on goal. And you saw that over the weekend was us just being able to handball from one to another and get into the goal square with no one on us. So it was uh, it was cool. It was awesome to be a part of, and and hopefully we can continue that momentum into Anzac Day this week. I think uh, Fly said after the game last one. We'll, mm. we'll move on. But uh, Fly said after the game that, it, you know, he can tell when it's when the, the team's playing their type of footy and, and when that momentum's back and that excitement and that Whenever surge. we kick 123 points. Is yeah. Is that, but did it feel... <laughs> it's a little bit of a sign. <laughs> like you, you beat Hawthorne, but that, I don't know, it didn't feel like... like it, For a half of the football, we were looked good and then the other yeah. half we were, yeah, not as good. So for three quarters, did this feel like Collingwood of 2023? Um, I think it's always different. You have a different kind of group of players that are playing. Like there's a couple of different players that are there in the team. And um, I don't ever want to compare it to 2023 because that was unique within itself. And, you know, we're on a different journey this year. But um, I think the confidence of the game plan and where everyone's supposed to be in connection between players and staff was was there over the weekend. That was pretty evident. So uh, if we can continue that, it's it's good signs for the future. Oh, and let's look ahead to the week that's coming. Uh, obviously, Richmond, Melbourne coming off the bye, and that's because they are playing Anzac E. Love this game too. The night before, it's it's a completely, it's not a, it's a completely different feel, but for the same occasion, it's just an amazing uh, spectacle that they put yep. on. Lights off, everyone pulls their like phones out, their torches, and it, it backlights the whole 
like main stage, which is the MCG, you've got them coming in on their horses and they, they light the cauldron and it goes up and it's, it's an amazing thing. I feel like there's not many games that you would be jealous of because you get to play in some of the yeah. biggest games there is. This one's got to be one that you look at and you're like, geez, I wish I was out there. This is the, uh, the biggest game that I wish I could play in. Mm. Not to say I want to play for either one of those teams and hopefully, you know, play for Collingwood, I guess, my whole career. But um, even, you know, because we always have had Anzac Day, so I've never been able to even go and experience this and see it. Mm. But even just to be a spectator at this game, I think would be cool. And to play in it is another kind of level of it, but it is a really amazing thing they do on the day and uh, what they've been able to kind of, you know, sort out as an event and the way they go about it and how everyone buys in and, and shows that respect and, you know, the lights go off. It's just such a spectacle. It's really cool. And I feel like it's something that everyone looks back on fondly whenever they experience it. And yeah, it's going to be a great, great game. I mean, look, we're talking about footy here. Let's be honest. I think we're all picking Melbourne here. This is, uh, and this is. I don't want to. It's probably inappropriate, isn't it? If I, but <laughs> respect to the Anzacs. But this is my cock lock. Cock. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got in trouble. We got we got some messages from you in your last last week's cock oh. lock, which was Fremantle over West Coast, and obviously that didn't go so well. I threw it out and too flippantly. Someone's multi, I, and they were like, "Oh, I'll, I'll lock in the cock lock for this week." And Fremantle ended up losing to West Coast, and it screwed over his old multi. I think he lost him like over a grand. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was, it was a decent. I think it was paying like thirty eight bucks or whatever. Oh. Had like eight legs in there, mm. and just one fail, and it was. <laughs> it was a zero. Brady's West Coast. Cock lock. <laughs> oh, Freo would have been paying like a dollar six yeah. as well, or something like stupidly low. Mm. So I, I was just too flippant when I said cock lock. It hasn't been a thing. I just threw it out we're there. We're making it a thing. Didn't, is this your cock lock for the week? D- didn't know people were going to get on board the cock lock, but this is the cock lock of the week. Melbourne <laughs> beats Richmond, guaranteed. Put it in the book. Guaranteed. It's Hang the cock dollar. lock. <laughs> it's the cock lock. It actually has me a bit nervous. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Richmond's, Richmond's coming back. Richmond's a good team. Know, like, Big stage. Oh, uh, yeah. You never know. I will, I will be texting you if they end up winning oh, this game. Come but, on, Melbourne. Oh, man. We'll go to the next game. Obviously, Anzac Day, SM versus Collingwood. Massive. Uh, massive, massive game. And, uh, talking about footy. You know, uh, Essendon's going really well. Collingwood now, a uh, few few wins in a row, uh, three and three. It's going to be a big football game, but the day itself is, you know, so much bigger than that. And it's such a cool experience. I'm so honored and blessed to have experienced a lot of them in my life. Um, this is 10th one I've been part of the club with, mm-hmm. which is pretty crazy to think about. And, um, yeah, it's just awesome to be able to show, you know, respect to those people at you know, make the sacrifices that, you know, some of us couldn't fathom and, you know, put their lives on the line for the things we take adva- take for granted every single day. It is a crazy game. I don't think mm. there's many like it no. in the world, let alone in Australian sport. I don't think there's sport. anything like it in the world, to be honest. Uh, but, yeah, massive game. If we talk footy, uh, well, you obviously made your debut. Yeah. You kicked the first goal, first kick. Mm. That's that club's only got about forty thousand people. Yeah, in it. That's <laughs> not that prestigious. <laughs> I keep getting reminded. <laughs> um, uh, but and then you had that one, the real late one, where was it, Jamie again? I just I'll pluck out Jamie. Did he kick a match winner in the Essendon Anzac nah, Day game, that was or was that Anzac a different Day. one? That was a, that was a later in the year. Oh, damn. We had um, well, last year was uh, Darcy Moore's Anzac speech. Oh, that was special. Very good. Yeah, be, what are your moments? What I are your best answers? I don't moments? know what Darcy's going to be doing to try to top that this year. <laughs> Maybe he has to go like the opposite. Just be like, I don't know. Just shorten to the point. Yeah, super yeah. chill. Yeah. Um, what's that? What was the question? What, what's answer? like your biggest Anzac memories? Obviously, first game. Uh, yeah, first game is pretty tough to beat. Like to have that kick a goal, you know, probably I guess come onto the scene and where everyone's like, why are we playing this American kind of mm. thing? And and be able to kind of show I guess value to the team was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Darcy Moore kicking it to me. It was kind of like a full circle moment after he had presented my jumper to me. Uh, I've talked about, about, about that many a times. But every game uh, itself is just totally unique. Like I, I, I kind of think like you, you have the football side of it, but there's like that moment of facing the opposition, um, you know, having the the minute of silence and the pin drop. And you kind of have that, I don't know, it's like a, it's a real gratitude moment. Mm. Like whenever you're out there of just like one – you know, you think about like the people have sacrificed so much for you and then two, how incredible the moment is and how you can kind of be able to use sport to showcase how important Anzacs are. 
Um, and then you kind of look around the stadium and then you'll kind of every once in a while see like a bay of Anzacs there, you know, which are like all kind of, you know, in their uniforms, which is cool. And it's just, there's so many things that happen. Everyone wears the pins and stuff from their family members. Um, that, yeah, it's just, it's a unique experience every single time. And you, every time you go out there and you kind of look around the MCG whenever it's, you know, the minute of silence and everyone's showing so much respect. It's, it's like you said, it's unlike anything else in this world. Like, I wish everyone could experience that. And I feel extremely, you know, blessed to be able to experience, you know, six or seven or however many I've done over my career. And it's it's awesome every single time. It's something you circle on the calendar, something you look forward to, and something as a club we're very, you know, honored to be able to to be a part of. What's plans for the week leading in? Well, mom and dad are in town. For, they're here for the month, so they got here last week. Uh, so I'll be hanging out with them for a bit. But Big, big games only. Ladies big games only, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, they go from here to the Carlton game um, <laughs> and Anzac Day. Um, yeah, so oh, it's a five-day break, so it's a pretty short break. Um, so we'll probably just... Be really focusing on just resting out to get ready for this match. It's um, it's one of those things that Anzac Day falls on whatever day it is, so we yeah. don't really have a choice around that. It's always going to be a short break with Anzac Day, and then we have a longer break after it. So, you know, it's it's more about recovery for this game and and being ready, you know, primed to go by the time the the day comes around. Um, after the game, I'm going to live golf, which is pretty cool. You. Yeah, so, yep. Yeah, Bust out the gloves? I actually might just wear the golf glove. <laughs> actually, maybe I don't need to change. Just maybe I'll just go in. straight there. Yeah. Um, so doing that after, which would be cool. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm excited for Anzac Day. It's always a, it's always a good time. Yeah, it's going to be pretty special. Have you ever felt it from the other side of the fence? Have you watched one from the stands? Yeah, I've watched quite a few from the stands, like two, two or three, I think. Yeah, which yeah. my first game, or first Anzac game I watched, I was, you know, it was my first year and, I didn't really understand what was going on or yeah. you know anything about it really, and uh, that was that was really cool to experience and kind of I think having that as your first experience and then like having that as a, something you want to thrive or sorry strive to be able to to do mm. and I did that in my second year which was cool so that was um, that was unique but it was just like it was so different to me I'd never seen it before didn't know anything about it people talked about it as a big deal um, and then I guess like over the years and it's a lot of stuff that I've kind of started to pick up as it become more and more Australian every single, you know, every single week, I feel like. Um, you learn about all this history and stuff that comes with Australian culture, and that's kind of one of the cool cool bits I've been able to, you know, I guess be educated on through the years. It is special. I'm looking forward to mm. it. I'm also looking forward to this arguably equal biggest game on Anzac Day, Ooh. GWS Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is just after your game. Yep. I'm sure everyone will catch it. The uh, big Anzac clash uh, coming off losses each. Uh, I'm not really doing a good job of selling this. Uh, <laughs> so, it's at the ACT, the Australian Capital Territory. It's at Monica. Yeah. Uh, so desperate times for Brizzy if they lose this. Mm. Um, probably, you know, they're a long way off. They need to get a bit of a run up if they're going to make. But finals. if this is a chance for them to turn around, if they do it against GWS, that's good signs. Yeah, and last time, last, opportunity for him. last year, Charlie went ballistic, kicked seven, mm. which was pretty crazy. So, I don't know. Let's see what happens. It isn't at the Gabba, so <laughs> fair chance they can get the job done. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I, I, I'd probably go GWS. I feel like GWS is just... I, I can't. After GWS lost this week, you, it's tough to go against them, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. they'll, they'll bounce back. I don't know what Brisbane is. Um, they kick the, how many teams have we seen kick in the 30s? I have not seen that for a long time. It's it like, was a rainy day. I'll give them that. It was pouring down. Well, you so haven't I seen it for a long time. It happened like last weekend and then the weekend before that. And then the weekend. Mm -hmm. So many teams are kicking 30s. Get mm -hmm. them up. Scores up. Uh, Port St. Kilda, we don't have a lot for this game because <laughs> I'm not really. It should be a good game, but just not that excited for it. Uh, I'm picking Port. At Adelaide Oval, tough not to pick Port here. St. Kilda had a big loss last week against Western Bulldogs. So, there is a chance they get a bit of a you know rocket lit under them, and they yeah are able to win on the you road. Sound but confident? I want to go port for the cock lock, <laughs> cock lock of the week. Oh, no, so we, geez, we need to be able to say the cock lock know. without laughing. <laughs> Should we put cock lock? We cock, make it a little yeah, bit cock less sexual. Cock oh, no, that no. sounds weirder. Cock lock. Uh, cock lock for the week. Port Pat Adelaide to lock. win at Adelaide versus St Kilda. Oh, and they just keep getting better because hey, North yay, Melbourne yay. versus Adelaide in Tassie. There is a big game coming up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but not this one. Not, uh, this not one this is going to be down in Tasmania. What? Hopefully, like, it's, uh, send them some good games. Like, <laughs> like. Oh. 
have some good games. Last year it was not I want North versus Gold Coast in round 23. Send them some good stuff. So, like, we're trying to warm them up. They've got a new team coming in. Oh, it's totally uh, mate, mate. North versus Adelaide. To use, Who do we go? i got to go Adelaide. Oh, I don't know. No. If they get screwed over this week, boycott. It's Jeez. coming. Yeah, I'm going to go Adelaide on this one. Tough for North Melbourne, but I don't know where they're going to get their first win. Nah, well, yeah. I, like, if you couldn't even come close to beating Hawthorne, uh, no, I don't no, know. But no, here no. we go. We're this into the good stuff. Around. Now we turn around. Here we go. Geelong, Geelong versus Carlton at the MCG. <laughs> we got through it. Finally, a big, big game over this weekend. This is, you know, Geelong's undefeated. Yep. Carlton, a little see all the top four. You know, they're looking at, uh, they just beat GWS, who's undefeated, and they, you know, on a bit of a roll at the moment. So if they can knock off two previously this, undefeated teams. Oh, man, it's going to be an interesting one. I mean, Geelong's not their home ground at the MCG. I'm going to go and back Geelong um, because they haven't given me anything to jump um, off them for. They're due for a few goals after the weekend. Charlie Cam- or sorry, um, Jezza didn't score. Tomahawk didn't score. Nothing. They're due for a big bag. Um, I'm going to go Carlton. Yeah. Nah, I don't know. I'll just I'll, I'll have to go Carlton. I think they play better on a bigger field. Geelong's yeah, you know, not as good at the MCG as they are at the so uh, home ground. So handy to have Walsh come back in and then just he's like been dominating too. Be like, elite straight away is yeah. crazy. Frio Bulldogs. Now this is just trouble for the loser. <laughs> like mm. Frio, you know, we gave them the grace because they had a couple of unlucky close losses, but the loss to West Coast obviously just threw them Alarm under. Bells. And then now if. Western Bulldogs go over there and win. Maybe they're fixed. We give them that grace that they're fixed. Uh, but I don't know. If you're a Frio supporter and you lose to the Bulldogs at home over there, you'd be a bit filthy. Yeah. After losing to West Coast at Optus Oval, I'm not sure whose home game it was. but That should switch them on. Yeah. I think – I know Western Bulldogs had a big win this week against St. Kilda. So interested to see where this Norton – yeah, you know, Ugo Hayden and all this kind of stuff happens. You know, who's going to play in the forward line? Who's going to play back? All this. I've got Freo winning this. Yeah, Sean Darcy's back. I like it. Got Luke Jackson kicking three. I like it. Mm. They're going to have to. Both teams need to figure out something because one's got Sean Darcy, Luke Jackson, that whole schmozzle, mm. and then uh, the others have you know holes in the a line. plethora of very talented players. You, uh, you'd normally say that it's a good problem to have, but I don't know. Uh, then we move over to Biggie versus Tupac. Hey. We got New York, LA. We got Gold Coast versus West Coast. Man. We East v. West. Who you got? You, well, I know who you got. Biggie. By how many is the real answer? I got Gold Coast Suns beating West Coast at the Gold Coast at Stadium. At the People's, at the people's First. First, because we love the people. Love the people. Love the people here on the pod. Um... Uh, I think it'll be tighter than what you would expect. West Coast is on a roll at the moment, though. I mean, beating Frio is a big clip for them. So Confidence is key. Confidence is key. I'm going to go Gold Coast by two goals. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go, yeah, Gold Coast by so, right? four. Jared Wedge kicks a goal this week. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. You get, you get the monkey uh, off the back. The hoodoo's gone. The hoodoo's gone, bro. Uh, Hawthorne, Sydney, old rivals from way back, grand mm. final times. Uh, how do you see this one playing out? I think it's probably obvious. Yeah, I, I mean, it's tough to look past Sydney uh, beating Hawthorne. It is at the MCG, which gives them a bit of a, a chance, I feel like, being Hawthorne's home ground. Hawthorne's but, on a bit of a run. Yeah, they won their last game, smashed North Melbourne, bit of confidence for them. Sydney, though, is just too good of a team, I think. They're just they're firing on all cylinders. They're finding their straps at the moment. They're going to be a tough team for anyone that matches up against them. Yeah. So that's the weekend's mm-hmm. footy. A couple of good games that we had. Yeah. The fixture this week was really good. Just gone. So moving into this, there had to be a couple of downers. Still on Carlton. It's, Collingwood, it's, that's oh, a good it's, game. Yeah, front weighted with Anzac Day is yeah. just absolutely like just absolute showstopper of a fixture. Uh, before we move into the fan questions, we have yeah. had a few fan questions, a lot of which you would be surprised to hear were about your glove. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> But I just want to say something on uh, Nathan Murphy, obviously, yep. sad news from mm. throughout the week that he's uh, calling time on his career due to concussion, uh, handled it really well. Like, very yep. classy, very- Oh, his speech it was awesome. Too. Funny. One of the best he's, I've heard. He's got funny. He should have a podcast. <laughs> he should. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> awesome bloke. Really good bloke. Selfless, yeah. fearless on the footy field. Uh, mm. How- 
how's the week been for the the club and just dealing with Murph? It's always a bit sad, you know, to see someone have to call retirement early. Mm-hmm. Like he's still got a, con- like a year left on his contract, and I think the club's committed to um, to seeing out that year for him and having him involved in some capacity. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but um, yeah, it's always tough. Like he's he's a young guy. He's you know 24, 25, I want to say, and to to have him have to call his retirement early you know, from something that's kind of uncontrollable is is never an easy thing to see. Like, it kind of is a stark reminder for us of just, you know, how every game could be your last. Mm. Um, and that's kind of uh, what kind of goes through your minds. But he he, he handled it incredibly well, mm. spoke super well, and he had a smile on his face and was just super grateful for everything he got to experience. Um, you know, finishing his career on, you know, grand final day, winning a, a you know, grand final is, is pretty amazing and, and so glad he was able to, to be able to experience that. But... Um, I think as we learn more about concussions and all this kind of stuff, like it's got to be taken a, a lot more serious. And he got all the information I guess he needed to be able to make that decision from from doctors and everything else, and was you know able to make that uh, that tough call, which is never easy. So yeah, we wish him all the best, and he's you know always going to be part of the club and always welcome through our doors. And uh, but yeah, it's it's a tough thing to see you know a fellow brother just not be able to to play another game, and you know just. I don't know. Like it's it's never fun. Like it just sucks. It does suck just to have him have to call it early. But you know, it's been six or seven rounds, and you know, we were kind of waiting for more information, and we're mm. on what was going to happen, and everything else. And then you know, once that kind of day came, everyone was like, "Well, you know, like he's you know in our best twenty three whenever we're playing." So mm. there's definitely got to be something that's you know definitely happening behind the scenes that is a bit more serious than we realized. It must have been at least somewhat of a sense of relief because I'm sure every day he would have been getting asked like what's the deal mm. when are you coming back all of those kind of things uh, and yeah just tragic that it had to end uh, prematurely but he seemed pretty optimistic about like the whole thing and it's awesome to see that Collingwood is keeping him on yeah uh, which is yeah that's cool to see good guys in sport you want them yeah. to, to stick around as long as possible it is alarming the amount of uh, concussion retirements that we're seeing over the past decade alone is yeah. increasing pretty rapidly. Um, and it does take courage to kind of oh, like sure. yeah. pull, the, pull the pin uh, and obviously not something that you'd do very lightly. Um, but, yeah, all the best. Prayers up for Murph. Prayers up to Murph. Um, and he's going to enjoy some time down in Turkey, I think. He's got yeah. a little place down there. He's a big surfer, so yeah, he's well, going to go. He's going to be a comedian the way that he was riffing yeah. some of those oh, jokes. so funny. Uh, All right, let's get into the fan questions as we do. We always love the fan questions that well, you uh, that you submit out there, listeners. Well, this one is definitely directed towards you. It's not a me thing. Mm. Are you a member of the Tortured Poets Department? Yes. And to the people out there that don't understand what this means, there's a new Taylor Swift album. Um, I have listened to most of it. I haven't listened to it all in full in chronological order. Chronological order, sorry. Yeah, right. um, but I have... You know, heard some of the songs and listened to the songs that people have told me are the best ones. I'm not a big, uh, I can't even say the sentence because the Swifties will come at They're me. They're going to kill you. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> so I won't. So uh, I won't. So I'm just kidding. But the, um, so what's the next question, right? <laughs> what else you got? The Kim Kardashian beef. I, yes. have, I have heard about that. Very, very obvious the old beef track. I feel that's warranted. It was like they edited like voice recordings. Oh. Way back in the way back in the day, so these are like mm. they hold on to everything. Yeah. Um, well, they being Taylor, Taylor Swift yeah. wrote a song about it, but essentially like doctored voice recordings of Taylor Swift giving permission for Kanye West to use a line about her in one of Kanye's songs. Yeah. Uh, and and the Swifties don't forget, neither does Taylor. Ooh, no. She's come after and has. K I M in capitals in the title. In the title. It, not even subtle. No, <laughs> not at all. And I respect that because she is untouchable at the moment. Just Taylor Swift, everyone loves her, and you can't, like you said, can't say anything negative about her, Brayden. No. So, you know, I'm I'm all for it. Let the beef just be out there. Just yeah. let's go. I, she's talking trash about all her ex-boyfriends. She's, talking, she's even written a song about Travis already. You know, she's talking shit to, to Kim. I'm I'm, all, I'm here for it. Let's let's grab our popcorn and just see how this pans out. It's a good. Let's arc. just get into it. It's a very good arc. Uh, what other accessories are you going to wear on the field from Lara? Um, uh, jeez, headband. I'm thinking maybe grow my hair out. What do you think? Yeah. Grow my hair out. I bit of a headband scenario. Thinking back to the Beaver uh, times with the hair, hair band. Oh, dude, I should. Man, I could get. 
Yeah, you get Darcy's like little <laughs> Nadal headband. You really look like a creator character from a video game. You I know, you try ridiculous. to make them look as weird as possible. You put the glasses <laughs> on them, the glove. You make them freakishly tall. The fact that it was like that AFL 23 or whatever game had yeah. the glasses on me when I was playing. I was like, respect. Yeah. And someone before the game, I think it was maybe Checkers, came up to me and goes, I can't wait for the footy card with you in the white glove. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, here we go. They always pick the one game where you're uh, looking different. Don't yeah, they? Just to put you on really a card. It, yeah, look different from the other years. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe set, send in some submissions, what we need to get going. Cause what do you think the AFL will approve? Yeah. Gold chains? Oh, I don't know. Mm. There was a player, I think McDonald from Bright Hawthorne, pink tights. has the um, braid in his hair, like a, oh. and it's got like beads in it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe beads, yeah. but something. Don't know. something. Uh, we'll move into the next question. 10-year anniversary next year since – no, next game since you started playing football. How does that feel? You know, it is 10 years since I debuted. So Pretty wild. You're a baby face, little kid. Yeah, very young. It's weird now to think 10 years have passed playing football. Yeah. A whole decade of playing AFL. That's how, how am I still here? That is <laughs> That's such a question. It's actually scary. Uh, I don't like how time progresses. It's, it's, it is scary. <laughs> I will say if, that. We, if we just stop that. Uh, when you've had a win – how does the rest of your day look? That's from Julia. Oh, man. Julia, I'm so exhausted. I just go to bed and sleep. I usually do ice baths and stuff after. I try to do a bit of recovery, stretching if I can. Um, this week, I actually went up to the Dandenong Ranges and got away for a little bit, which was nice. I uh, got into nature, which was good. Uh, but yeah, usually it's a bit of an ice bath recovery straight away. Um, nice little meal, maybe a little cheat meal. Went to grilled, as you do. You live in grilled. Uh, we essentially live in grilled. Uh, but... Yeah, no, nah, have a bit of a chill time, some food, recharge, uh, refuel, and then um, next day you just got to be active. And a lot of people play sport and stuff, you're really sore the day after, and it's tough to get out of bed, but you just have to get out and mm. go for like a walk or a run or a jog or something just to get the uh, the body flushed out. And you drive yourself home, don't you? Yeah. Do yeah, so, yeah. you have windows down and you just crank and tune, singing along? No. Oh, I do that every time I leave here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any love for Ken Hinckley? That's from oh. Musty. Man, no, I didn't see him after the game. I Still waiting totally for the forgot. dap up. I need the dap up with Ken. Ah, I did see him preseason, though. I did run into him at the uh, Channel 7 suit. Sorry, Channel 7 shoot. Yeah. And said hi to him, had a little of a chat. But uh, yeah, massive love for Ken. We all know we love Ken on this show. Yeah, uh, did, but I didn't did get a chance, no favors this week. chance to, to dap him up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, next time we play him, I'll have to. Well, I'll have to say that before, and I'll be in front of mind to dump yeah. him up before the game. Very good call. Um, but yeah, now nah, Ken, love Ken. That's it. That's it. That's it from the Mason Cox today. Big show. Big show today. Sorry, we didn't split it in two this week because it's a short week with Anzac Eve and Anzac Day. And uh, we just put it into one because there's two. We only get one release date, and that's on Tuesday. Which is odd. Uh, that's fine. People probably want to watch the footy. There you go. Don't blame them. <laughs> hey, everyone, tune in. Hopefully, all of our uh, cock locks get up. And um, I just want to say a massive thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening through this. Uh, appreciate the fan questions, as always. Check us out on the socials and give us your input as we do this every single week and love to hear from you. So thank you so much for tuning in. But that's it from us for now. We'll see you next week. If you have a good game with this, you have to play with it forever. Maybe I should do two gloves next week. No glove, no love. <laughs> no glove, no love. See ya.